graduates, family members, friends, faculty, and staff, welcome to the recognition ceremony for psychology majors in the class of 2018. Before we begin the program, I'd like to share a few announcements. Please refrain from taking photographs of graduates receiving their diplomas. We have a professional photographer here to take formal pictures. We encourage you to take pictures of your graduate outside on the steps of the chapel once the ceremony concludes. Restroom facilities can be found in the Divinity School and Page Auditorium, both of which are next door and accessible through the side doors. Should you need anything during the ceremony, just alert one of the helpers scattered around the room. Helpers, please wave so we can see where you are. While this is a time of celebration, please hold your applause until all diplomas have been awarded, at which time we will collectively celebrate the group of graduates. Our program today focuses on our amazing graduates and their outstanding accomplishments. Each of you who will soon walk across these steps could tell an amazing story about your scholarship or your research, about how you mentored others or served as a true friend about your successes and about your challenges, and how you learned from those challenges and came out stronger. Every person in this chapel, parents, relatives, friends, faculty, and staff, is here for one simple reason. We are proud of you. We were proud of all your hard work before coming to Duke, and we are proud of how you've grown as a scholar and as a person since coming to Duke. And as of today, we're all proud of you for a new reason. You are no longer a student at Duke University. You are a graduate of Duke University. <laughs> to begin our program, we welcome our student speaker, Nona Kiknadze, who will offer some brief remarks on behalf of the graduates. Nona is graduating with an A.B. degree with distinction in psychology and an A.B. degree in Asian and Middle Eastern studies. After graduation, she will be traveling for a year before applying to research positions and graduate school in psychology. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Nona Kiknadze, and I'm deeply honored to be the student commencement speaker for psychology. I actually haven't told my parents I was speaking here today because I wanted it to be a surprise for them. To all the mothers in the audience and to my own, happy Mother's Day. I wouldn't be the woman I am today if it wasn't for you. Before I say anything else, I want to first congratulate my peers on what they've just achieved. We chose Duke because we desired the challenge and yet it somehow still came as a surprise to most of us just how challenging it would be. Whether you're going off to graduate school in psychology or in another field, doing research, joining the workforce, taking a gap year, or any of the other amazing plans I've heard from you all, I urge you to take a moment to truly acknowledge what you've accomplished here. As the concept of graduation begins to take concrete form, so too do the infinite possibilities of what comes after. Aside from responding to this realization with the requisite emotions of nostalgia and apprehension, I also find this idea freeing. Because for the first time since we started the trajectory of school all those years ago, we're truly faced with a choice of what to do next. Now there often seems to be a mismatch between what science does and what the rest of the world knows. So regardless of your future career paths, consider what you've learned in this discipline. Psychology is a scientific study of the human experience. It is about the empirical examination of life and behavior, thought and identity, and we look at those questions that are integral, not just to how we define ourselves, but how we relate to and interact with others. It is a discipline that will never cease to be relevant, and the fact that we have been trained in it helps us see the world in ways many others do not. When you start looking critically at culture and accept its subjectivity, pre-established conventions begin to fall apart. There are many ways of seeing the world, and there are many ways of changing it. People are often scared to admit they don't know everything, thinking then that the presumption is that they know nothing. 
Nothing is more moving nor more disorienting than discovering the extent of your own ignorance. Yet that is what essentially defines being in this discipline. Every day, we must come face to face with the realization that we don't know, that we want to know, and that we will make our best efforts to find out. This kind of curiosity requires a bravery that should not go unmentioned. The best type of education is the one that answers the questions you didn't even think to ask. Thank you, Duke, for making us ask questions and for giving us the moments that we'll take away from this place. We spent late nights in Perkins, we cheered at Duke basketball games, and we confused the social sciences building with social psych. <laughs> and now it's time to congratulate ourselves, fellow graduates, because we made it through. Thank you very much. Every year, we give two awards to psychology majors who have demonstrated excellence in research. The Bruner Award is named for Jerome S. Bruner, a member of the Duke class of 1937 and an eminent psychological scientist. The award recognizes a student who demonstrates intellectual curiosity through research and shows potential for a career in psychological science. This award includes a monetary prize and addition of the winner's name to a memorial plaque in Zener Auditorium. This year's Bruner Award recipient is Camila Vargas Restrepo. <laughs> Camila, Camila completed a thesis on the social impact of energy, energy monitoring technologies through visual media studies, as well as two projects in the lab of psychology and neuroscience faculty member Dr. Elizabeth Marsh one on understanding how curiosity arises, and the other on how graphs can mislead. Camila is also the recipient of the Visual Studies Initiative Award and a member of Phi Beta Kappa. As, as Camila, Camila has come forward to receive her award, let's recognize her achievement with a round of applause. The Zener Award is given annually to a student who demonstrates excellence in research by producing a senior thesis paper that is near publication quality. The award is named for Carl E. Zener, a prominent member of the Duke Psychology faculty between 1928 and 1964. This award also includes a monetary prize and addition of the winner's name to a memorial plaque in Zener Auditorium. The winner of this year's Zener Award is Karen Catherine Young. Karen, Karen's project, How to Speak Without Saying a Word, a Comparison of Infants' Responses to Three Nonverbal Cues, was supervised by Dr. Makiba Wilborn. Please join me in congratulating Karen as she receives her award. Karen is one of 26 majors graduating with distinction in psychology. In addition to maintaining a high GPA in the major, these students completed a research project and produced a thesis document under the supervision of a faculty member. They presented the findings from their work in poster format at the university's Visible Thinking Symposium and defended their theses before committee of faculty members and graduate students. Students, please come forward as I call your name and read the title of your thesis. Please remain on the steps until you are joined by your fellow distinction students and the group photo has been taken. Elizabeth Claire Adler, Social Attention and Autism Spectrum Disorder. Ifua, I'm sorry. <laughs> Ifua Ansa, Beliefs, Attachment Orientations, and Relationship Quality in Friendships and Romantic Relationships. Chloe Celeste Banker, In My Humble Opinion, A Hypoegoic Non-Entitlement Model of Humility. Rachel Grace Buchanan, Distress in Durham, 
neighborhood characteristics and use of police-based mental health services. Lucy Yue Chow, Whispering Wealth, Social Class and Brand Prominence Preferences. Alexandra Maria Sarkowska, Goals and Others, Interpersonal Fit and Self-Regulatory Outsourcing in Goal Pursuit. Jack Barrett Dolgen, Separating the Influence of Budget and Numeric Priming on Willingness to Pay. Jacqueline Michelle Emerson, sensory over-responsivity is associated with restricted repetitive behaviors in children with autism spectrum disorder. Aquina Kathleen Fox, why some co-ruminative co friendships are more problematic than others, associations among co-rumination, friendship quality, and internalizing problems. Madison Ray Heath, effects of exercise type, volume, and intensity on depression in an active population. Ehizoka Onomenosa Ihi Onkan, does HIV HCV co infection correlate with more neurocognitive deficits than HIV mono infection in a stimulant abusing or a stimulant using population? Taylor Powell Eichner, Alternative Representations for Medical Information, Consequences for Cognition and Action. Sarah McKenzie Jackson, Like Mother, Like Child, The Role of Maternal Depression on Future Child Internalizing Symptoms. Nona Charlotte Kiknazi, Comfort Zone Orientation, Moving Beyond One's Comfort Zone. Michaela Ann Kovac Galton, Gender and Stress in Cross Race Interactions, Differential Impacts for Men and Women. Christopher Ricard Lee, How Health and Religion Interact, an Interplay Between Post-Traumatic Stress Disorder, Pain, and Religious Involvement. Samantha Erin Neal, Cross-Cultural Examinations of Children's Perceptions of Racially Ambiguous Asian Slash White Faces. Savannah Grace Lynn, Internet Usage and Mental Health in Transgender Youth and Adolescents. Eric Savaride, Exploring Body Image in the Context of Gender Dysphoria and Hormone Replacement Therapy. Christine Ruth Townsley, if at first you don't succeed, reconsider. Attainability cues and adaptive disengagement. Sarah Mackenzie Walker, speaking the language of your body. Distorted interoceptive awareness in anorexia nervosa. Madeline Grace Wilkerson, Disordered Eating Predictors, 
associations between body image, exercise, and eating disorder symptoms. Grace Anna Williams, Mental Health of Division I Student Athletes at Duke University. Edil Yuzgan, Cumulative Early Childhood Adversity and Late Antisocial Behavior, The Potential Mediating Role of Neurocognitive Functioning. Karen Catherine Young, How to Speak Without Saying a Word, A Comparison of Infants' Responses to Three Nonverbal Cues. Let us now recognize all of these students for their accomplishments. Each year, a representative from the faculty offers remarks on behalf of colleagues in the Department of Psychology and Neuroscience who have advised, taught, and mentored our graduates. Our speaker this year is Gary Bennett, the Bishop McDermott Family Professor of Psychology and Neuroscience, Global Health and Medicine. Professor Bennett is a clinical psychologist whose influential research primarily concerns digital treatments for obesity. Bennett is a first-rate teacher, having been inducted into the Duke Bass Society of Fellows which honors faculty members who maintain an internationally recognized program of scholarship while demonstrating excellence as innovative and dedicated undergraduate teachers. In just a few weeks, he will step into the position of Vice Provost for Undergraduate Education, from which he will lead campus-wide efforts to ensure that undergraduates have a world-class learning experience at Duke. Please join me in welcoming Professor Gary Bennett. Good afternoon, parents, siblings, grandparents, friends, second cousins, twice removed. I bid you welcome to Duke and our fair chapel. Now, when my colleagues gave me the great honor of speaking before you today, I probably should have checked to see who the graduation speaker was first. I can promise you I am no Tim Cook, except perhaps in my own mind. But I do have one thing on him, a much cooler job. It's true I don't get to spend my days making amazing tools that change the world. No, I get to spend my time with a different group of world changers, the class of 2018. But before I go on to the moms, I would wish you Happy Mother's Day. But it's clear that that wish has already been granted. Your smiles are illuminating the room. It's perhaps fitting that Duke chooses to celebrate its graduation ceremonies each year on Mother's Day. Because on a day when we celebrate individual accomplishment, we should probably be reminded that we didn't get here alone. So thanks, Mom. I'm a psychologist, not a psychic, but I do know this. If I ask your parents, your grandparents, your siblings, or your second cousin what they most wanted for you, class of 2018, they wouldn't say money, a great job, a caring spouse, grandkids, a house with you out of it. Okay, they might say all of those things, but most of all, they would say that they want you to be happy, fulfilled, 
and to make a difference in the world. And I believe that you can achieve those dreams. Although older generations frequently, and I think unfairly, criticize yours, I've seen a different side of the millennial generation. I've seen you work hard, dig deep, focus intently, support your peers, and share your gifts with others. I have great confidence that your generation will preserve, protect, and defend not only our nation, but our world for the benefit of my daughters. You have great optimism and sense of purpose, but occasionally I do see you get down, and that's usually when things don't go according to your plan. Now, and I understand your frustration. Your plan is what got you here, and it's what got you through here. But unfortunately, the moment you walk through those doors, you're going to find that your plans are frequently challenged. For most of us, life after college is unpredictable, haphazard, seemingly random. I was married right there, just steps away from where I am right now. And on that day, 17 years ago, I could never have predicted standing here today. It simply was not part of my plan. But I'm here, and I'm happy, and my wife is too. So the question is this, with all the challenges that you face, all that you will encounter, how do you give yourself the best opportunity to be fulfilled and to make a difference? Well, you're at a psychology graduation, so you might have suspected that psychology has some answers. We don't actually have a lot of laws in psychology, but this one gets pretty close. When our behaviors, our decisions, our choices are driven by internal forces, we're more likely to be happy, less anxious, less depressed, and more productive. When we're internally driven, we do things because we find them satisfying, fun, rewarding. The challenge is that we live in a society where we're constantly bombarded by external motivators, people telling us to make more money, get promoted, buy the big house, get the big car. It can be important for us to focus on these external motivators. They, they give us guideposts for our life and career, but satisfying them won't make you happy. And it's not enough to just follow your dreams. We have to fuel our internal drive. We have to fuel our internal motivators to give us the best chance for happiness, fulfillment, and difference making. Nell's life offers us a great example of how we can do that. Now, Nell was a talented woman who just loved to write. She'd been writing her whole life, and she'd been sharing her writing her entire life with her friends. She got into a great college, but she couldn't focus there because all she wanted to do was write. People in her life were flummoxed. They told her to stay in college, graduate, get a job, start a family. But Nell just couldn't focus on what they had to say. She heard them, but she heard something inside that was stronger. So she left college. She moved hundreds of miles away to a big city in an apartment that she couldn't afford. And for the next couple of years, she worked in a job that would never be a career. And she wrote with almost all of her remaining time. But Nell always made time for her friends, and she had some very good ones. She spent a lot of time with a group of friends, a couple named the Browns, and together they shared their aspirations, their challenges, and Nell's writing. Nell cared deeply for the Browns, and they for her. And they came to understand the magnitude of her writing abilities. They came into a little bit of money, and they decided to give her a gift. And so one year at Christmas, Nell was sitting there, and she saw a little envelope sitting on the Christmas tree. It was addressed to her. She went over and she opened it, and inside was a note that said, you have one year off from your job to write whatever you please. And write she did, intently. And over the next year, Nell Harper Lee wrote To Kill a Mockingbird and changed not only her life, but the world as well. Harper's life shows us the benefits of fueling our internal motivation. Psychological science shows that this fuel consists of three things. First, you have to feed your need to develop skills and expertise, even mastery in an area that matters to you. Harper wrote constantly, spent months editing Mockingbird. Similarly, you all need to find an area that you love, that speaks to your own interests, and master it. Second, we have to control the course of our own lives. Harper took this to an extreme, bucking the conventions of her time and her community. You don't have to go that far. You should listen to others' perspectives. And then you should make decisions that are consistent with what you want to do in the world and who you want to be. And finally, we have to stay connected to others. As focused as Harper was on her writing, she always remained connected with her friends. Follow her lead. 
If you didn't get here alone, you won't make it alone. So stay connected with your friends and particularly your family. No matter what Freud said, it is not their fault. So call them, text them, Snapchat them. I know it's a little late for that, but they just learned it. And cherish the time that you have left with them. Now, as good as it sounds, I'm not suggesting that you quit your job, move to some small island, and write the great American novel. I'm not suggesting that your friends or family pay for it. And I'm also not suggesting that you follow your dreams at the expense of food and shelter. I am saying that if you spend all of your time in a job that you don't love, sitting at a desk, doing things that are at the behest of others, don't be surprised if you feel unfulfilled. You have to fuel your internal drive and balance it with what comes externally. Develop expertise, shape your path, stay connected with others. This will keep you engaged, increase your fulfillment and your happiness. And you might just make a difference. Now, one last thing before I go. We are gonna miss you. You're not just our students and our advisees, but you've become part of our lives. We talk about you at dinner. I do. My girls come up to me almost every day after teaching and say, how was class, Daddy? Did your students say anything interesting? We faculty chat about you in the hallways and in hushed tones in our offices when you need our help. We celebrate your successes even when you're not there. And that won't change once you leave. For the next couple of years, we'll be saying, remember when and have you heard about so-and-so? At graduation, we mostly talk about how your lives have changed but the truth is that you've changed our lives as well. You've challenged us to be better, work harder, and learn more to give you an experience that we hope was transformative. And for that, we're grateful. Congratulations. It is now time to recognize our graduates by the awarding of their diplomas. Please approach the front as your name is called. Verity Roseanne Abel. Elizabeth Claire Adler. Grayson James Allen. Ifua Ansa. Fidal Arditi. Anne Marie Asamoah. <laughs> Chloe Celeste Banker. Paget Caroline Barranco. Edward Asquith Bartlett. Duncan Hayashi Bartok. Ella Baser. Katie Michelle Bates. May Theodora Benben. Susanna Lee Bergstein. Zoe Burke.
Catherine Irene Burko. Rachel Grace Buchanan. Bridget Eileen Burroughs. Emily Day Burroughs. Aaron Batrico. Anna Clara Caldwell. Lucy Yue Chow. Xavier Carmichael. Rachel Daisy Ann Cephas. Alyssa Danielle Chilano. Chandler Lee Sissel. Alexandra Maria Sarkoska. Michelle Dawson. Minoy Deborah Jaing. Catherine Morgan Diaz. Peyton Lee Dilweg. Jack Barrett Dolgen. Katherine Grayson Drugon. Jacqueline Michelle Emerson. Gianna Chantal Falk. Dorothy Fang. Aquina Kathleen Fox. Kara Ann Fox. Sarah Ann Fury. Leah Rose Goldman. Tyler Edward Halpern. Zach Tyler Harmon. <laughs> Leslie Marie Hayes. <laughs> Madison Ray Heath. <laughs> Orly May Hespenhide. Jasmine Hill. Caroline Elizabeth Hubble. Ihizoka Onominosa Ihi Onkan. Taylor Powell Eichner. Sarah, Sarah McKenzie Jackson. Kaylee Sophia Johnson. Elijah Kinsler Jonah. Rachel Sophie Katz. Jordan Christopher Kern. 
Nona Charlotte Kiknazi. Emma Jade Lily Colton Baker. Davis Ryan Copenhaver. Michaela Ann Kovac Galton. Ashley Danielle Kristen. Kendall Lee Krushevsky. Jasmine Page Lawrence. Christopher Ricard Lee. Anna Kayan Lee. Andrew Yechin Liu. Marvin Ronald Lloyd, Jr. Callan Denise Laughlin. Joshua McKinley Lovett. Savannah Grace Lynn. Leona McGuire. Lisa McGuire. Madison Lee Martin. Gabriela Maria Martinez Maure. Samantha Rose Myers. Marissa Faith Michaels. Ashton Marie Miller. Katie Ann Miller. Yoshie Mizuguchi. Alexis Dominique Monroe. Abby Lynn Melstein. Aishwarya Nog. Samantha Erin Neal. Hun Now Win. Taylor Jacqueline Panzer. Emma Paradiso. Bengisu Pai. Lindsay Catherine Peck. Alexander Enrique Pena. Jessica Morgan Petro Cohen. Stephanie Lorraine Pezzuti. Madeline Plocky. Abigail Stebbins Pine.
Gabriela Grace Rivera. Toria Catherine Rose. Jacob Sanders. Eric Savaride. Maya Amar Sala. Haluk Shabander. Natalie Michelle Shamos. Jing Yang Shane. Kamal Jackson Smith. Kayla Spidel. Eloise Wood Stanton. Jacqueline Marie Thomas. Christine Ruth Townsley. Paco Tran Tien. Sarah Lee Turner. Eileen Enid Valverde Vindas. Camila Vargas Restrepo. Alma Paula Vasquez Smith. Sarah Mackenzie Walker. EO Wang. Julia Hannah Weber. Jarrett Austin White. Madeline Grace Wilkerson. Grace Anna Williams. Cecilia Yi Shea. Deborah Yan. Edil Yuzgun. <laughs> Karis Haun Yoon. Karen Catherine Young. Caroline Smith Zubieta. Now let us recognize all of our graduates with a spirited round of applause.
graduates, on behalf of our entire department, I want to express our great pride in your accomplishments. Even though you are leaving Duke for the next stage of your studies or your career, you will always be part of the Duke family. So keep in touch. Send us updates. We know that you will use what you've learned here at Duke to change the world for the better. Parents, thank you. Thank you for raising students with the brilliance and drive to be Duke graduates. Thank you for trusting us with them for the last four years. And thank you for your continuing support of these new graduates as they change the world. Faculty, thank you for not just being professors or lecturers, but for being mentors mentoring these students about their studies, about their research, and about life. Staff, especially Whitney Edmister and Natalia Silva Harwood, thank you for being there to support these students as they dealt with all the opportunities and bureaucracy at Duke. And finally, thanks to the many people who made this celebration possible. Faculty, staff, and the psychology student volunteers, Savannah Bunn, Elizabeth Collins, Kayla Harris, Samisha Hassan, and Lydia Hendrick. This concludes the recognition ceremony. Guests, please remain in your seats for the exit processional. And let's all applaud our graduates one last time.